When at all possible, when you're studying a language, it's always good to have a study group or a partner. Uh, you want to do this for a number of reasons. The first reason is accountability. A partner or a study group will keep you accountable to keep up with the work and to keep studying on time. But another reason is that it's important for encouragement and to fill in the gaps. Your partners will know what you don't know and you'll be able to help your partners with what they might not know. And so in some sense, it makes it go faster. Additionally, when students get together and teach each other, they always learn the material better because they're helping each other in the context of studying. So don't minimize uh, the power of studying together and don't study alone if at all possible. Another tip that I find helpful for students is uh, not just the amount of time you study, but how you divide that time up. If you're gonna study three hours in a particular day, it's better to study in one hour blocks over the course of the day rather than a big three hour chunk. Your mind can't really absorb three hours of Hebrew information in a single block, and so it's better to study for an hour, take 30 minutes to an hour off doing something else, study for another hour, take some more time off and then study again. And by doing that, your brain is a little more refreshed and can absorb information better. In addition to breaking up your study um, over the day into smaller chunks throughout the day, another important uh, tip for studying Biblical Hebrew is to do it every day. A frequency of exposure and repetition is really the key uh, to mastering this language. And so the more you can kind of expose your brain to the language and the letters and reading out loud and seeing those forms, the faster your brain will absorb them and the longer it will retain them. So study uh, small chunks throughout the day and study a little bit every day, even on the days you think you're taking off. Get up early uh, and read a little bit of Hebrew or review your vocabulary or review a paradigm. Don't let a day go by over the course of the first two years of really your language study that will uh, allow you to skip that and not uh, kind of reinforce what you've been learning. Let me also highlight how important it is to um, perform your work in a language study, uh, something like Hebrew or Greek, neatly. Uh, you want to write neatly, you want to write clearly, you want to use even spaces, uh, you want to pay attention to every detail, every accent mark, every vowel point, every curve on the consonant. Uh, your brain is, is um, an, an efficient machine and it will pick up those visual clues each time you write them out carefully. So when you're writing out things, you're employing as many senses as you can. You're feeling the pencil writing, you're seeing the forms. If you say it out loud, you'll hear it and you'll speak it. The more senses you can employ in the learning process, the faster you'll learn it and the longer you'll retain it. But it's very important that you execute those things neatly, not just for your own sake, but for the sake of your professor's grading and your peers interacting with you uh, in the learning process. Now, when you're memorizing anything from the alphabet to vowels or paradigms later, you want to memorize those things, what I say is like a robot. You want to memorize them with robotic recall, like a computer. You never want to just kind of know a paradigm. You want to know it to the best of your ability so that it's clear frontwards and backwards from Hebrew to English and English to Hebrew. You don't want to um, skimp on those things. Uh, usually in language studies, we require very little memorization of paradigms and maximum exposure to the other items that will help you understand the forms. And so those things we do ask you to memorize, you need to memorize like a robot. Another super important tip for studying Hebrew or any language really, is to make sure that you get enough sleep every night for your brain to be working properly the next day. I understand that one of the biggest um, temptations in college or grad school or when you're simply studying anything, uh, maybe even distance like when you're working full time, is to stay up late and to get up early and then to minimize your sleep. The problem with that is your brain needs rest in order to memorize and understand things. And so the more sleep you can get while you're studying a language, actually the better you'll learn that language and the faster you'll be able to use it. I think the last thing that I would recommend uh, when it comes to studying Hebrew or Greek or Aramaic or I guess any of the languages um, that uh, you're studying at the time is to really have fun doing it. You've got to remember uh, that you've been called to the ministry or you've been called to study this language and you're really working to understand uh, God's Word better. And so in spite of all the pressure or um, all of the rigor that it might be to learn the language, one of the best things about it is you're gonna be able to read God's Word in the original language. And that motivating factor will keep you trudging through 
paradigms and parsing and difficult translations and understanding morphology that just doesn't make sense. All of that stuff is good because it helps you to better understand and better read God's Word, which will make you a better servant of His church. Mm -hmm.